Hey guys, it's Kelly. I am back with another process video. I am using a hip kit kit from the month of August for this. And I also need to just apologize real quick. The uh, setup is a little bit different. I'm at a library cropping with a friend and um, short of climbing on top of the conference table, I couldn't quite see the screen on my phone. I, I could tell that it was in uh, the view, I just couldn't quite see if it was crooked or straight or anything, but so I'm um, sorry about that. So what I am doing is I have taken this piece of pink fresh paper from the kit and using that as my background. And I'm just um, putting some gesso on the background because I knew I wanted to use some gelatos. And I'm just tapping it down and then blotting it a little bit. I wanted the dreamy effect. I didn't want brush strokes or, you know, to have the entire paper covered with white and I didn't have any clear gesso at that time. So I just decided to blot it down to give it just that subtle effect. And I pulled out this uh, mint gelato and my whole thing with this was to play a little bit and knowing that I was going to put my pictures you know, exactly where I am actually putting the gelato down. Um, I just wanted little bits of it to peek out. It's just to give the background just a little bit more interest. I didn't want to um, overwhelm the background and I loved it so much. It's not that I was trying to change it. It was just that I wanted to add something else. And my pictures did end up covering most of the that mint color but oh well so I did take out um, this really pretty pink as well and it did go down pretty bright so you will see um, I took something and just kind of blotted a little bit of that up as well and um, then it just blended into uh, the background more the colors were more along the same lines so the other thing that I do for the background is I'm going to pull out this um, stencil that I received in one of the hip kits and it's a basic gray stencil I believe, no Hero Arts and it has little hearts peppered all over it and it is just one of my favorite stencils. I love the little hearts and I've seen a couple of other stencils that have a bunch of little hearts and I might need to have those too. Those might need to go on my Christmas list. So anyway, I just wanted to have a, a, the spattering of hearts um, come out underneath my photos as well. And if you um, haven't used mixed media, you need to know that if you use texture paste or modeling paste on one of your stencils that you need to wipe it off pretty quickly because if you don't, it will be very hard to clean up and it might alter the look of your stencil. I won't say that it'll ruin it, but it'll definitely change it. So these pictures, I knew that I wanted to mount on vellum just to give it more of that dreamy effect. And let me tell you the story behind these pictures. Um, the one that I'm holding right now is a letter that my daughter wrote to the Tooth Fairy. And unfortunately, I didn't date this. And I, you know, it goes back and you're thinking, oh, I'll remember this. Yeah, you don't. Um, I know that she was probably around seven when she um, left this note. And I wanted to read it to you because it's so darn cute. I almost can't stand it. It says, Dear Tooth Fairy, I don't want money. Give it to someone who needs it more. I'm blessed. Give it to someone who's not. Here's five cent more. I like Littlest Pet Shops. I hope you give the money to someone who needs it more than a blessed child like me. Since really, Emily. Um, it cracked me up. She was thinking sincerely, was spelt since really. And um, it was just so darn sweet. Um, <laughs> telling the, you know, Tooth Fairy, you can leave me a, you know, little pet shot animal, but you know, don't worry about money. You know, what comes out of kids' mouths or things that they write or things that they say, you just wonder where they get it from. But at least I had the wherewithal to save the note 
knowing that at that time, you know, in our lives, I just wasn't able to scrapbook as much and knew that this story was definitely one of those stories that needs to be told. And when I came across this note again, I went down to her room and pulled some of these little pet shot figurines that she still has. Um, she doesn't play with them or pull them out anymore, but she has not gotten rid of them. And um, so just pulled those out and took a picture just so that later on down the road, when you know people are trying to remember what they looked like, they would have a visual reminder. So I knew that the, the pictures were gonna cover up a lot of the gelato. So I went ahead and I trimmed down the shelf and uh, the photo mats behind the pictures as well. And when I um, pulled some of the embellishments out, I knew that um, I wanted to use some of them. And, you know, I was trying to think what I was going to do with it. And I decided to pull out a little bit of yellow. And this is the Heidi Swap Mist and Butter. And I'm not putting on the background because, truthfully, I didn't want anything else on the background. I, I was afraid it would mess up. And I loved the look that it had right then. Um, but I wanted to bring a little bit, just a teeny splash of color to that grid paper. And I knew that once again, m my pictures would cover up the majority, but it's just a little bit peeking out that serves as visual interest. And then I went ahead and I did add a few splatters to the background as well. So at this point, I'm just trying to get my, my shelf fixed and then seeing how my pictures are gonna look over top of it. And um, I'm starting to like how it looks. So I wanted to go ahead and get everything um, adhered down. And if I found that with, you know, adhering things on a gessoed background sometimes or a background that has gelatos, that you either have to use a hot gun or my quick dry adhesive also works well. So I wanted to bring a little bit more depth to the pink photo mats that I backed it with. This paper is from Seven, um, which is from Studio Calico, I guess a different brand of Studio Calico, and it's with their Amelia line. And I just took the sponge sugar uh, distress ink and just inked the edges just to add more depth of that color and um, then I took a little bit of the brown um, I think that's brushed corduroy and just um, again just to add a little bit more depth you know inked the edges of those photo mats and one of the reasons you know that I was thinking is that I liked to do different photo mats or different paper layers behind the photos, but with this kit, I didn't really wanna be introducing more colors. And so that kind of gave me somewhat of an effect that I was going for without bringing in an additional color. So I decided to go ahead and pop up one of the photos. Because of the orientation of the letter, I wanted that one to stay on the right hand side. And plus it has some nice open space on the bottom of that photo that I can rest an embellishment over. And I already knew that I wanted to use one of the Dear Lizzie embellishments. So it just made more sense to pop up the one on the left. So you can see that Dear Lizzie embellishment just fits so nicely right there and I love it. It was a perfect sentiment for these photos and this story. So I also pulled off the envelope on uh, that Dear Lizzie chipboard set, thinking it was perfect since she wrote a letter. And these gold thickers are so, so pretty. And I just thought that the cute would be great to work with. I didn't quite know what else to title it with. Um, titles sometimes are a struggle. And, you know, if I can use a pre-made uh, title that is as pretty as this one, I'm fine with going for that and not having to worry about what I want it to say. 
So at this point, I'm just moving things around, trying to figure out a home. I had pulled out some of these Pink Fresh embellishments and was trying to get them to work on the page. And um, those wood veneer ones, I just could not get to set right. It, it just didn't look right for me. So I had taped some, um, a, a few minutes of the t recording just didn't record. So what I did is I took a piece of yellow paper from um, my stash, it was just like a strip, and put it behind the two photos just to help um, bring in another spot of that yellow. And I put the Crate um, Wonder Ephemera, the clock, down on that left-hand side and thought the bedside clock uh, worked well for this, you know, since she left the note on the bedside table and usually an alarm clock is there. And I also used some of the washi tape up under that yellow felt heart and that is from the ephemera collection as well. And at this point it is pretty much done. I am just taking one more mist and um, just adding a few more sprinkles just again to bring a little bit more of the depth and dimension to the page. And that's pretty much it. I'd like to thank you guys for hanging out with me today and hope you have a great day. I do have some stills at the end. Thanks. Bye.